Welcome back. It's still the breakfast, and it's time for all the press. And my guests, Chief Judy Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, is here with me to take a look at those headlines on the front pages of some national dailies. Good morning to you, Chief Judy Johnson. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be with you and our viewers all over the world. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you too. So let's just go right into it with the Punch newspaper. And the Punch is leading with subsidy removal. Governors plan cash transfers to poor households. Dump Buhari's list. The writer there states to compile new social registers, governors to spend FAAC allocations on scheme. Tinubu approves infrastructure fund. NEC adopts gas-powered vehicles for states. So the governors are saying that uh, Buhari's social register lacks credibility. Why did it take them so long to open up? Talk to us about your take on this very first headline on the punch. An era of psychophancy and an era of people playing the ostrich. In an era of people uh, just go to, to whoever is in leadership position, tell whoever is in leadership position that uh, whatever he or she does is the right thing, and as soon as that person vacates leadership position, they all turn back away from him. The reality of what life is all about, what leadership is all about, is dawning on Buhari now in Daura, wherever he is. Um, while he was the president, he was the toast of everybody. Now, Tinubu is the toast of all the governors. Tomorrow, if he's no longer the president, that's what they are going to see about him. Well, when federal government has a plan to spend money, we operate a federal system of government. The state as well should also join in this in these regards to, to spend this money in ensuring that the palliatives are provided. But knowing our history and knowing where we are coming from, you recall what happened with palliatives during the COVID lockdown. As a result of that, a lot of people have some misgivings and skepticism with respect to the sincerity of government at all levels. Now, when the federal government is relating with the state government with respect to compilation of this list, I think the federal government should have related with the local government, which is the grassroots government, which is government that is closer to the people and in such a way get the true nature and the true beneficiaries of of this um, this palliative that is coming from government and not state government that will use it as one of their political tools mm. to gain political traction when the election is coming. I think that it should be directed and involved to the local governments and it's unfortunate but that's the reality. We travel through the length and breadth of Nigeria you understand that those that are in government are far away from, from, from reality. I had to travel to Enugu by road because my flight was cancelled on Tuesday. And I can tell you for a fact, what I witnessed, I don't think that we have government in this, in this country. Even the governors are far away from reality. The president is far away from reality because I never, I can't recall the last time he traveled through the length and breadth of Nigeria uh, using roads and what have you or using the roads, even during the course of the campaign, they were flying and using choppers left right and center. So if you don't know the people you are governing, how would you get, how would you give them the rules of democracy? So when they are planning this list, how did they come about this list? You can only get through a quick list from the local government. These are the people, these are the government that are closer and direct to the people. Mm -hmm. There is also this angle to this, even though it, we are saying, okay, so finally you're opening up and opening up on the fact that this social list that the former administration had is not credible. You're just opening up on that. Okay, so let the states come up with their own uh, social register. But then there is also the fear that, just as you've said, they may just use it to score political points. Also, there's also the fear that they may also siphon the money. Yeah, that's why I said this money should go directly to the local government, I, which is the government that is closer to the people. That's the reality. The unfortunate thing is that we don't even have the local government structure in Nigeria because most of these local governments are just extension of the governor's office because we are sole administrator in some of these things appointed by the governor, approved by the, by the state as of assembly. All of these are antithetical. If you really have, you see, 
the military government, because they lack the legitimacy, at least they have respect for some certain structure. You see the local government as a functional component part of what the, the military structure, because by the hierarchical structure, whatever structure they put in place, or even when they're in power at the state level and the local government level, the functionality of the local government under military seems to be much more better. When you do in public administration, the only way you make science of public administration is to do a comparative analysis. When you do the comparative analysis of local government under military administration, mm. and you do it with local government under a, a democratic ad, administration, you discover that they are not at par. In actual sense, the local government are more functional. They have access to their funds. They have access to do whatever basic responsibility are required to do under military regime compared to what we have now under civilian administration, which I don't want to call democratic administration because there's no democracy at the local government in any case. So when you just oppose the two, you understand that in reality, if you are not careful, this list will just be some of the list, just like the palliative, just like every program of government, while the paper... So I guess what we should really seek to get from this is a very transparent way of disbursing these funds. Because the local why, government... Why, why, why do you have to disburse? In the first instance, it is required of the local government to have this list. Because it's part of the budget of the local... Social welfare is part of the part of the budget of the local government. It's where they draw resources to pay traditional rulers. I think it's about 10 to 15 percent. I don't know now. While I used to work in the local government, it used to be 10 to 15 percent of the budget goes to social welfare, mm. dealing with traditional rulers and the vulnerable segment of the population. So if you are looking for countries that have laws, laws to take care of everything, it's Nigeria. Our but the implementation. The and the implementation application and implementation of these laws. The local governments are empowered to do this, to gather this. Is it the governor that is in state secretariat, that's, uh, state government that, that surround himself with his security aid, that even people that voted for him cannot have access to him? For example, from Lagos State, can I have access? Can I just walk up to Sohulu? Can I just walk up to his office? I can walk up to the office of my local government chairman. I know where, he's, where he lives. I know where his office is. If he's coming down, he has no choice but to talk to me. But I can't do that if I try to do that with my governor. His aides will stop me from doing that. And if I make any attempt, the DSS or the security aides, they have arrest me, that I'm a public news as I throw me. So in actual sense, the governor themselves and those and the and the press are far away from reality. That's why we say local government is grassroots government. You elect people from amongst yourself that lives within your community, that knows the community inside out. And that's why some have clamored for us, for some have clamored that there is a need for us to have a unified local government structure across the length and breadth of this country. Mm. But unfortunately, it is those that claim to be progressive that did not sign that amendment under Buhari's administration. Those that fought over Sanjo over the over, over the local government fund being withheld were those that did not even sign to Lagos State, Ogun State, Ekiti State. It stayed from Southwest. It's so unfortunate. But we are now in power. We hope we'll do the right thing because our local, our local ambience, we are the one there now. <laughs> All right, let's look to the masthead of the Punch newspaper and just quickly go through the three uh, headlines there. You have APC crisis, National Working Committee. Members oppose Ganduje Tip, North Central for chair. You have military destroys 23 illegal refineries, arrest 60 oil thieves. NMPCL UTM to build Nigeria's first floating gas plant. So let's quickly touch on this APC crisis. Ganduje well, is out and he's not. Um, well, Ganduje is not popular, obviously. That's just what it is. Ganduje is not a popular candidate. Talk to us on that. Well, um, we don't even know the actual truth about the crisis in the APC. It took them almost three years for them to elect a national um, executive council of, of the party where they have a contraption of, 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 of illegality where the governor of Yubi State then was acting as the chairman of the Kiatika Committee for almost 
to Ali Arab, yes. Mm -hmm. Now you elected um, um, Adam Abdullah last year and Yeremi Shuri, and before we know, see Jack Robinson, all of a sudden we learned that they resigned. I'm not too sure, I don't know whether you have seen their resignation letter. I have not seen their resignation mm -hmm. letter. Uh, nobody has seen that resignation letter. Somebody just called the meeting and said that the national secretary and the national chairman, in one first week, have resigned from their office. One of the things, I don't know how EPC seems to be managing this. They seem to be managing their own internal crisis better than um, than other political party because all of this self-implosion could have self-inflicted wound and self-inflicted implosion could have, could have led to the collapse of the party. We wait and see. But as far as the arrangement, the zoning arrangement, and how this North Central was changed, I'm not too sure that the, is the, the North Central does not have any of the principal officers of National Assembly because it was clear that they have, they have the national chairman, yet the South West got, despite having the national secretary, despite having the presidency. Now, in the North West, the North West had deputy senate president and the speaker, and then you want to take we want to take um, the national chairman to 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 seem not west. It's it will be an unpopular choice. Even if the character is popular, mm. um, it will be an unpopular choice because there will be an attempt by 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 the people of the north central to resist any attempt to take away from them what has been allocated to to, to their zone. So in terms of the zoning arrangement, it, it will be it do not make any sense for APC to be thinking of Ganduji. And it seems to be that. Uh, the, the the people that um, would be the national chairman of APC must usually be a former governor. Just check the history. BC Akonde, BC Akonde to Oyegun, Oyegun to Adam Sushiamole, Adam Sushiamole to uh, Mala, Mai, Mala Buni, Buni to Adam. So we wait whether it will be another former governor or a sitting governor that will act in acting capacity. To see what will come out of it. But in any case, um, they must put their house in order. And that's why we don't have a cabinet in place up till now. All right, let's look at this uh, lesser headline down there. Since you're from Lagos State, you give us uh, details of this. Ignore statement announcing oral rights, Lagos tells residents. What's that about? Now, the, the, the state government didn't come out with release during the election when people are coming up in a democratic um administration when you have the, and then the circular state where you have the right to your freedom of practice whether you're a traditionalist or you, you are a christian or a muslim my own worship shouldn't disturb your own worship but in the course of the election you saw chiefs and ballots declaring that Oro, restricting the movement of people the governor did not come out because he would be he was was to be a beneficiary quote unquote of that of that arrangement now that government elections are gone governors is starting and then you don't collect money from people based on their ethnicity, based on their label. You collect taxes, levies and revenues from everybody. So when it comes to that, uh, you are not talking about it. You are just playing to the gallery. It tells you about the hypocrisy of governance, uh, the, 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 the lack of sincerity on the part of those who have given responsibility to manage the affairs of our country. Why should you do why should your oro disturb me? Should don't disturb me. It's your worship. I, I, I believe in traditional I believe in traditional institutions. There's no doubt about that. Even though I'm a Christian, I keep telling people, why do you have to go to mountain in Arabia or go to mountain in Jerusalem when there are mountains, when there are mountains in Okemesi, when there are mountains in Udi, in Enugu, when there are mountains all over Nigeria. So if there are gods in the mountain in Arabia, there are gods in the mountain we have in Africa and in Nigeria. And even in, in any case, we even have better mountains than they, they do. So, but that should not disturb anybody. Everybody should go about the normal business. If you want to do your own, you do your own. And if I want to go about my business, as long as I don't disturb you, you don't have to disturb me. So this should be the, 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 the real action of government, and it shouldn't be limited to some specific time before you come up with it. Okay, before we leave the punch, let's. What was this NNPC uh, UTM uh, building of Nigeria's first floating gas plant about? What do we know about that? You see, government. You see, we see a lot of policy statements to, to serve as distraction. In one of the side story that we didn't do focus on, on the point, said that in the, the military, uh, I think, destroyed some refinery. Yeah, sixty uh, floating, uh, illegal refineries. Twenty three. They don't need to tell us about what they are going to do. They should do the needful. We saw what Aramco is doing. You see what Aramco is doing in, in Saudi Arabia. Mm. You know what Petronas is doing 
Petronas is doing in Brazil. I can't recall the name of this uh, Venezuela oil company. We saw what they are doing, and then they don't come out and make serious bonus. Okay, you, you recall the privatization. What has come out of the privatization of an NPC? We just saw the fan flare, the, the Rasma task. At the end of it, we don't even know the full details of what is going on in, in the NPC. Take like the ones that the refinery that were destroyed. What you need to do is that when people are committing illegal actions, you convert those assets. You convert those assets to state assets. Why do you have to destroy those refineries? You don't need to destroy it. You, are, you acquire it for the state, and the state begins to operate that. You begin to operate that. Or when you see when you see buildings from from people that have criminal records, people that have stolen, what you need to do is to convert those assets to government assets rather than sell those properties to themselves. When they destroy it, they will just tell us why we destroy 50. You actually know, mm. based on the reports we have gotten about destruction of illegal refinery, by now, in the last 10 years, we shouldn't have any. We shouldn't have any again. But they will tell us on paper that they destroyed 50. Are we sure that actually they destroyed 50 or they destroyed some of it and they still allow some of these people to operate? So these are the challenges. Women, People commit infractions when they break the law and you convert their asset to state asset, not destroying it. Then, you know, the state is gaining from it. Oh, well, let's move from the punch to the Guardian newspaper, which leads with Hajj 2023. Tears, complaints, trail Nigeria's 304 billion naira capital flight to Mecca. This is actually the big story of the Guardian newspaper. Uh, the full story is on pages four and five. Well, What's your take on um, this? As a secular state, as a secular state, we have argued that there is no need, uh, coming from the Euro story, to pilgrimage now. Um, you see, the state has no business sponsoring or getting involved in people going for pilgrimage, either to Mecca or to Jerusalem. But you know, because of the nature, and the reason why we had this was that during the military era, in order to score legitimacy, mm. in order to score legitimacy, uh, the military looked up because they destroyed the political system as one of the institutions of the society. So they look up to religious leaders. And as a result of that, we have dipped our hand into a cookie jar that has become sticky, that we can't bring our heart out of it. And it's very clear. There is a need for federal, state, and local government to hands up. You see, when you want to, religion is your personal, is your personal belief, is your personal faith. So there is no need for states to get involved when you want to. Even if you read the five pillars of Islam, it was not said that the government should sponsor you. It was not said that somebody, people can sponsor you, but not government. But it was, it, it's, it's your own personal responsibility to go. Look at the amount of money. And people don't know that as far as Saudi Arabia is concerned, this is a tourist attraction for them. Mm -hmm. And they make, they make money. Yeah, so we, make, we've been in democracy money. since, we've had democracy since 1999. And people like you have repeatedly said, the government should stop sponsoring people on pilgrimages. Uh, they've not listened. Why do you think that even our democratically elected uh, leaders still seek legitimacy through these spendings? Well, we, that's, the, that's where we need to bring in our religious leaders. And um, you have the leader of the Islamic faith, the supreme, the leader, of, the chairman of the Supreme Council of Islam in, in Nigeria. You have the president of Khan. These are major stakeholders. If they should come together and say, you know what, government, stop funding this thing. Let people take a decision going about this. And I'm sure we will surely have, because there's a need for government to answer. If you want to go, go. If you don't want to go, don't go. It's your personal belief. It's your personal faith. It's your, it's your personal decision. There's no need for government. Now, just look at the foreign exchange that is tied to this. The foreign exchange that mm -hmm. is tied to to this in terms of the demand for foreign exchange for this activity, for this pilgrimage to Jerusalem and to Mecca. Just look at what, what we could use those foreign exchange to do in terms of business enterprise. Mm. Whether we like it or not, we are just contributing to Saudi economy. We contribute to Saudi, we contribute to Saudi economy because it's a tourist attraction from religious point of view. That's my take. And then what would you say to those who would say, see, 
Mr. Ajide Johnson just let us enjoy this because of all the monies in this country. This is the little that we are enjoying from this government. Let well, us continue to enjoy this. Is he everybody that have access to it? Is no, I mean, those who have been enjoying it, those no, who have been are, enjoying it. You might not be too sure that some are good, some have gone 10, 12, 13 times. Some are constant as the Northern Star in, in this list. Mm. And then it's just once in a lifetime. That's the requirement. That once in your lifetime, you show that to be sick maker. And some have made it to be a recurrent feature. By next year, uh, you've seen that some organization, uh, one of the major uh, allegations leveled against the S2I EFCC chairman was what? That he sponsored people to, to, to make up. And they stayed for, in very expensive hotels and, and, and hotels and, every, and, and, and whatever. And we have seen either the president, former or present, uh, former or present Senate president and then um, speaker have gone on pilgrimage with, with state resources. When they go, they go with state resources. The state will pay for it. We don't need all of that. We need they are asking us to make sacrifices. This is the time for them also to make to make to make sacrifices so that we can recover and rebound this economy that is in a dull drum. Okay, so NNPC is still on this headline here on The Guardian. NNPCL in major merger amid race for profitability. Well, um, you know, anytime, anything about NNPC gives me um, ad bonds. You know, ad bonds, why? Um, because NNPC, Central Bank, and some NP, um, and some other agencies like that, we don't actually get a true account of why well, these are revenue generating agencies for for the government. One, we don't usually have assets. Even the National Assembly does not know what, what they generate. Those that have oversight function, even with the public, we don't even know how they generate. Even the executive, the supervising ministries, don't even know how these agencies operate in the first in the first in the first instance. So these are these are these are state agencies that are agencies of agencies of the state that are bigger than other institutions of, of, of the state. So whatever they say, I just take it with a pinch of salt because if you look at other models, you look at the Saudi model of Aramco, which is their own national, you look at the Brazilian model of Petronas, and then you look at even Venezuela, that more or less, like from American perspective, does not have a democratically elected a government, a government that is autocratic and authoritarian. Here they have a model of their own oil and gas industry that is controlled, that is profitable. It's only in Nigeria. Or you look at that of that of um, that of Angola. It, if you compare all of this model and you take it to an NPC, it's like you are comparing it, you are comparing an adult with it. With, with, with a toddler in, in terms of the management, in terms of the structure of an NPC. There's but the longest we are in oil exploration in Nigeria, we are still totally compared to all other countries that have got into adulthood. Why should we be talking about major now on gas or what have you? I recall during 2004, 2005, there was this West African gas line pipe, pipeline project that was that was initiated that Nigeria would supply all the West African country with, with, with gas, natural gas that we are burning, the glass and the rest. What, what comes out of that? What comes out of those projects? We just come the big policy statement to distract us from the reality of, of the challenges we are facing. And then before you know it, another issue will come up. So I don't I don't really know. Yeah, the, 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 the COP, that's a coalition of uh, political parties are calling for the sack and investigation of Mele Kiari and um, you know seeking for a breath of fresh air in that sector, basically. Now, if, if you could take out the CBN, um, the CBN governor of the last administration, and then you have um, subsidy was 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 projected to end by June 30th this year, and on May 29, shortly after the president inaugural speech, the prices shut up. The following day, military came up and said, uh, "Well." There's no budget, there's no fund. Where was the budget initially meant for subsidy to end to like that first? So there's a lot of questions, there are a lot of things to if you look at 
uh, uh, he should have been fired in the first instance. He should. He should have been asked to, to, to take a leave. Because, look, did we get the actual money? Countries were making money because of the crisis between Ukraine and Russia. Yet it is this period. You remember the Gulf, the Gulf oil, the Gulf War in 1991. There was a windfall. What's the windfall coming out of this? Other countries are making money. What are we making? Rather, we are borrowing money to. And it's under the under the headship of Miliki Arari. He will come to the air, media will give him platform and will bamboozle us with with statistics, with figures, with rhetorics, and then we'll go, everybody will clap their hand. He's doing a good job. But the reality on the ground is that is our oil and gas sector what he should be. I'm not sure about everybody clapping their hands when he talks. I mean, I can tell you for free that sometimes when you hear these people talk, you begin to... It's as if the more they talk, the more confused you are about some of the things they're saying that's not giving accurate answers to the questions being that's asked. The, so. That's the beauty of rhetoric. And you know, Fela Nicola said, said something. When you just said, if you hear these people talk, if you hear these people talk, whether you like, you could judge her. If you don't like, you could judge her. So you, you saw the, uh, he, if you hear them talk, you wonder. Just like when you hear the former minister of works, when he talks, all you need to do is to take a trip. In the course of this, I've had cost to go to Enugu by road. Mm. I've had cost to go to Abuja and Kaduna by road. I've had cost to travel some parts of Nigeria through roads. And I, I wonder, in actual sense, did we even have government at all at the federal level or at the state mm. level? Did we even have minister of works at all? And you know, he was the one that accord people back to Ayo when he was in opposition as the governor of Lagos State. In, in fact, as far as I'm concerned, he's the most back to Ayo minister of works we have ever had. Hmm. Now, this is sad to hear this about uh, uh, former governor Raji Fashola because, I mean, you know, when he was that's governor reality, of Lagos State. We... My body is still aching for traveling from Lagos to Enugu by road, I'm telling you, since, since Tuesday. Well, that's, it's still, that's, it's still that's... aching. Hmm. It's, it's unbelievable. There, there's a particular spot in Benin. There's a bridge. Before you get to Benin, there's a particular spot. It's a death trap. You can never imagine. It's a death. There's a big hole on the bridge across that major river before you get to Benin. A big hole that a car, a saloon car will enter it. Hmm. A saloon car, I'm telling you, a saloon car will plunge into it if he's not careful, if he's driving in the night. Wow. All right, um, going down the mass trip, you have um, PEPC Justice Ugo's proposed resignation. Fake news, says Court of Appeal. Uh, to whatever, to every rumor, there is a sh shintilla of truth in it. Mm. Um, one of the things we do in leadership training is that as a leader, do not discount as any rumor that comes from the organization. Investigate it and look out for the shintilla of truth in it. And then if you understand our industry, uh, we say, and Ruma has said journalism is the industrialization of gossip. <laughs> so now, this is something that everybody should be interested in it. Is it not just somebody just coming up out and saying it's fake news? No, no, no. For that to come out into the public domain, there must have been whispers. And the whispers must have turned to rumor. And those rumors must, must have turned to gossip and those gossip is what we are having in the media because the media is just full of gossip. What people overheard, what they saw, what they overheard in, 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 in high places, and then it is projected in the media. So as far as I'm concerned, we shouldn't take this with a pinch of salt. We should look into this matter and investigate this matter. If there's any scintilla of truth in it, there's a need for us to address this particular issue. And I think that one thing that should be before the tender assembly is for us to review our enabling law. There are many issues that I told my student on Monday while I was teaching them political communication, that after all the parties have written their written, they've replied their written addresses. I'm going to do my own my own view concerning constitutional matters concerning 2023 election, the Abuja question, and then the timeline for, for us to pass judgment. You see, it's very important and it's very clear that we must, every matter relating to elect to election must be resolved. We must pass that law. Must be resolved before you swing anybody into power. It becomes pretty difficult.
to litigate against a sitting governor or against a sitting president. There's too much power in that office that can be used, quote unquote, against, because every other institution, the institutions that will litigate are, quote unquote, under mm. that particular office. The particular office, the, the, the office of the president has grown in leaps and bounds beyond what the framers of separation of powers ever thought of. Now, there is a particular story. I just want to link it with it. Where there is rancor with the National Assembly over committee, committee membership, the presidency, the executive trying to have control over who becomes the committee of this, the committee of that. If, if you think that's a rumor, then you don't understand what is going on within the political landscape. That, if you think that's a rumor, you don't understand what is going on with the political landscape because by now you should have you will have thought that the list of the committee chairman and the rest of it will have been released but i can tell you for a fact from what we have gotten from grapevine mm. it is no longer business as usual it's no longer business as usual with respect to to the list of the committees and that's why you are not getting the committee in the first instance the principal officers of the national assembly were more or less influenced by the executive. The national chairman came out. is one of the reasons that people are saying that he's responsible for his sudden resignation. If the principal officers were influenced, you're not talking about committee chairman. If the executive wanted to have control over the, over the leadership of the legislature, an independent body, a co-equal um, co body, how much more just committee committee chairman. Some of the things, as a journalist, you and I know that it's not everything we hear or everything we know that we report. We, some of us have got it in with respect to how the committee, what is delaying the, 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 the naming of the committees of the various houses, the, the Senate and the House of Reps. So it's, 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 it is what it is. But hopefully, uh, we see if they go about the same route, I can assure them they will not achieve anything. In governance, a leader does not need anybody to tell him he's a leader. He's a leader by all means and standard. Mm. A leader needs people to challenge his views, to give him contrary opinion, so that he can take informed decisions. Constructive a leader criticism. Does not, uh, yeah. yeah. A, a leader does not need people to think in the same direction. If all you see the what time. the story we started with, every governor was thinking the same way Buhari was thinking. He said it was good. The list was good when Buhari was president. The moment Buhari stepped out, the list was no longer mm -hmm. good. That okay, let's let's quickly is... touch on the Nature News, which is the last newspaper we have to look at. And it leads with soldiers arrest over 1,000 cattle for open grazing on Plata State farmlands. Well, that's um, not only the arrest. Such cattle uh -huh, mm. should be, should, once you confiscate that, and then you give it to, it should be part of the palliatives. <laughs> it should be part. It should be part of the palliatives. And then that will serve as a deterrent because, look, we are all into farming. You are in animal husbandry, I'm into cash crop. And then you are using your heads to on, destroy my, my cash crops. crop. It's, it's not fair. You are not, you are not being fair. So it's important for this particular issue to be, to be, to be addressed. Once this is done, I can tell you that those that are grazing will look for better pasture to graze their animal. And this has been a and major those... reason for the crisis in Plateau State, which has led to the deaths of hundreds, if not thousands of, in fact, thousands of people in that state. Yeah, this is, this is a decisive action, and I commend the military for doing this. But you don't even need military to do this. This should be a normal function for the police to do, for the police to even do, to execute. But when you have institutions that have compromised themselves with non-state actors, those are the challenges you're having. And I think we should go about it. If you want to preserve the environment, you must preserve, you must preserve agriculture. You must preserve the farmland. You must preserve the forest. Deforestation leads to uh, environmental degradation. In, and the totality of what affects the environment affects the entire, the entire, the entire society. So this, this is a step in the direction we commend the military but this action, when you confiscate it, there must be an accountability. Where is this 1,000 cattle going to? Hmm. Who do they Not belong to? Not just for to? us to sit. 
We were not just for us to sit on the pages of newspaper. Mm -hmm. You destroy sixty. You destroy sixty refinery. The following the following year, you destroy another sixty. How many refinery do we now have? Illegal refinery do we have? So if you confiscate one thousand katu, there should be an accountability. We want to know what you have done with those one thousand katu. Accountability. Not to confiscate. Not that you arrest them and you release them later. Accountability, accountability. We cannot overemphasize the need for that, indeed, in all spheres of our lives in this country. But moving forward, fuel subsidy relief, President Tinubu orders release of grains and fertilizers to 50 million beneficiaries. Page 5 is where, where is details the of that is. The list. Where is the list? The list. Where is the list? The list. The list. Mm. Yeah, the 50 million Nigerians. We are, uh, uh, who are those on the list? You see, numbers is so important. I'm a Christian by faith. Numbers is so important good, that God gave a particular book, the book of numbers. Data is important to planning. Without data, you can't plan. And, and that's why we have numbers of days that makes weeks, number of seconds that make minutes, number of minutes that make hour, number of hours that make a day, number of days that makes weeks, number of weeks that makes month, number of months that make a year, number of years that make. So if you don't have accurate data, you can't plan very well. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, where is the list? The 50 million. How did they come about that list? Break this 50 million down state by state. Local government by local government. And make the information available to journalists and all who are interested. When, when, when it is time for election, it is easier to know the demography of Nigerians, to break it down. When it comes to voting in election, the polling unit will get to your community. The ballot paper will get to your community. When it comes to deliverables of democracy, hmm. it won't get to you. If in actual sense we want to distribute this thing, we should go about if the data is there, let's use the polling unit. The polling unit is one of the smallest political and political unit in, in from the unit to the world. So let's use that. That's data. We have that data. If they use that data, it will get to our household. Because you need a number of households to form a political unit. When it comes to election, the ballot paper will get to your community. But when it comes to governance, the deliverables of governance will not get to you. Another Even issue raised by this also is, is the fact that more than half of our farmers no longer go to their farms. They can't go because security is, 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 is challenging. They can't go to the farm. Do you want to go to the farm and not return back home? Do you want to go to the farm and pay ransom? These are Issues and I hope that we 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 clap more for the for the change in the leadership. Yeah. So this of, this grains of, and fertilizers of, of, the security, of, of, of the security of the security architecture of the country, where we see that what we did not witness: soldiers arrested one thousand cows in Plateau State, and then soldiers destroyed sixty illegal refineries. We begin. We hope that. This effort will be consolidated. Once you provide security for lives and property, then your economy can grow, your economy can rebound. Yes, if because if they the cannot go back to their farms, these grains and fertilizers to 50 million farmers, if given to 50 million farmers indeed, where would they use them if they cannot even go to their farms? Now, you are talking about the quarter of the population of Nigeria, 50 million. 50 million. And we have the land. You see, every time, it's just that the security issue. Um, I recall sharing with my colleagues in Canon that while we were young, we read Mr. Mr. Agiwa is a trader in one of our English books that I used to travel through the length and breadth of Nigeria. Today is in Jaws, tomorrow is in Kanu. Every one of us, while we are growing up, we look forward to traveling through the length and breadth of Nigeria, going to the countryside because Nigeria was peaceful. Mm. Then Nigeria is beautiful. But if, if you are cost to travel, if you are forced by the, the epileptic nature of the aviation sector in Nigeria, if you are forced by it, the epileptic nature, because the aviation sector in Nigeria is epileptic, and you are the mercy of these operators in the aviation sector. You are their mercy. But when they cancel your flight, they don't give you anything in return. When you miss your flight, either by one hour 
or you are bad missing your flight, they exploit you and extort you to deliver them. If you travel by road, you see the green in nature. In the land we have is a land that the Israelis and the Palestine are fighting over. Mm. Land that we have in abundance for agriculture, yes. for housing, is the major issue between the Palestine and the Israelis. Yes, and yet yes. we have it in abundance. Sometimes yeah. you don't know the value of what you have. Because you have them in abundance. So sad, so sad. And that's the place to leave it right now because time will not permit us to look at every other headline on the newspapers. But thank you so much, Chief Jide Johnson, for your time this morning on The Breakfast. It's a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, you very much. You too. Jide Johnson, Chief Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, has joined us on Of The Press this morning in Lagos. Do stay with us as we continue with The Breakfast.